Welcome to our Boundary Supply Eris review. I'm strapping in, Tav. And you should strap in too. Why? Because this is going to be a rocket ship of a review. Rocket ship for two reasons. One, it's gonna be thick and kind of long. But two, like a rocket ship, the Boundary Supply Eris is kind of complicated. A lot of technology here, a lot of thought went into it, but it is not the simplest user experience. So in this review, we're gonna show you everything you need to know about this pack so you can figure out whether or not it's perfect for you and your travels. Okay, let's talk about the overall gist of the Boundary Supply Eris and the entire series, because it should be noted, this is the Rift Pack and this is the Stasis Sling. They're all sold separately, but they're all a part of the same Eris travel collection and they all obviously connect to each other modularly. This is a bag that's extremely complicated to use on the outside, but once we get to the inside, it's a little bit simpler of a user experience. We got some really interesting USPs for this bag, including a carbon fiber back panel, a gender neutral fit with a Velcro adjustable back panel, magnets galore, and some materials in general that I would describe as absolutely next level. Boundary supply, your material game is always so on point. But really, the biggest unique selling point with the Eris travel system are the modular components. So we're gonna briefly introduce you to the Stasis Sling and the Rift Pack, show you how they connect with the Eris Pack, and then further in the review, we'll review these modular components significantly more in depth. And just a brief rant on modular travel like this, this whole concept is extremely exciting to me. As someone who wants to travel the world with as few complications as possible, the idea of having a backpack where a sling and a fanny can connect to it like this and it's all one ecosystem is just thrilling beyond description. But the idea and the actual execution need to be aligned. And this is where we have some problems with what's happening here. Let's start with the stasis sling. So Tab and myself spent about 45 minutes trying to understand this pack. We were able to figure out how to put the modular components on fairly easily. It takes you about five minutes, but you get the gist. It should be noted that these are not like modular components where it's like, oh, I'm at the airport, I put down my bag, snap this off and just kind of go. That's not how these modular components work. They're kind of tough to get on and they're so much tougher to get off. At least for the stasis sling. The Rift Pack, significantly easier. This dude's a Let me show you why. The stasis sling connects with these G hooks, like this little like, Jesus on the cross, like plastic guy right there. And it's nice in one way, cause it's super secure, right? You could have just done like magnets and it would have maybe fallen off, but Boundary Supply said, hell no, we don't want the stasis sling flying off and you know, while you're on the back of a train in India, like you want the stasis sling with you at all times. But what you get in security, you lose in ease of use. So I'm going to try and get this off the stasis sling right now in real time. We'll speed it up, but let's go. That was exhausting. What was that like 45 seconds? Minute? Was able to get it off a little bit faster than I thought I would. Maybe as time goes on, you get better at it. But in essence, you saw the effort that went into it. Like my fingers hurt. Um, it's not easy. So I'm thrilled about the ability to pack this on the outside, right? And to have this sling that integrates with the backpack and it's just carried, it's, it's so cool and it looks dope on top of it. But wow, it's a getting it off. So if you're cool with getting on the airplane, landing at your destination, getting to your Airbnb, putting this bag down, taking a shot of whiskey, and you know, then like mentally preparing yourself for the hassle of unclipping it. And then, you know, after a minute, two minutes, you get it off and then you're good. You know, you're in, you know, Istanbul for a week and you don't need to worry about getting it off again, right? Because now you have your day pack. And then when you go back to the airport to catch your next flight, clipping it on is super simple. But if you were hoping that this would be your solution for when you're at the airport and like, I just, I'm gonna use the restroom real fast, take this with me, and it, that, that's not what's gonna happen. Real quick breakdown of the stasis sling. You got awesome fidlock magnet that opens up a zippered main compartment. Super basic in the main compartment. And then you got the sling strap at the top, which connects to the bottom. In essence, quite a good sling. 
But we'll talk about it more in depth further in the review. The timestamps are on the bottom if you wanna jump ahead and check it out. But now let's talk about the Rift Pack. This one, significantly easier to put on and to take off. Like if you're looking for the modular accessory that can be taken off easily at the airport, this is your guy. As opposed to those G hooks with the plastic thing, you just go ahead and unbuckle them here, unbuckle them there, significantly simpler. Now these buckles do connect to a G hook, which does connect to the plastic thing, which will give you the same nightmare that you just saw me with the stasis sling, but in essence, you can leave them on, no harm, no foul, and you can still grab this quite easily. Real fast with the Rift Pack, it's sort of a sling slash fanny strap right here, which you can buckle back into place, the back panel, top pocket, main compartment. Check out below to find the timestamp where you can see our full review of this. And now for the Aris. So let's just talk about the gist of this pack by itself. It's a 35 liter adventure slash work slash travel pack. And 35 liters is a great size for one bag travel. And what that means is most major airlines in the world will allow you to carry this bag onto your flight. Won't have to check it. I think the Boundary Supply always nails their aesthetic, this bag being no exception. You got three color options, a green, a black, and an orange. I think the orange is far and away the coolest. I am so glad they did not send us the black one. I wanted the orange one. I got the orange one. It's dope. But one thing to be aware of is it is quite heavy. It comes in weighing 4.27 pounds. This is definitely gonna be on a heavier side for a backpack of this size. Okay, let's talk about the front of the Boundary Supply Eris. I'm a big fan of Boundary Supply's material. It's a 400D nylon with a DWR coating, which means durable water resistant coating. So while it's a good city pack, that's why it can also double as an adventure or maybe even a hiking bag, because it's gonna be highly weather proof and weather resistant. Obviously we have the one, two, three, four, um, 360 clips as they're referred to. If you're traveling with the stasis sling, obviously those will be covered. But to be honest, like if you're not and you just rock this bag looking like this with the 360 clips just blasting their nips like this, I, I don't think it's a bad look. I think it's interesting. I don't think it takes away from the aesthetic. At the bottom, we have a little external lash point that you can maybe clip a carabiner on or just clip something onto. And then there is a front pocket right here. All of Boundary Supply's pockets are protected with YKK PU coated zips. Ooh, that's a beefy pocket. So this pocket goes all the way down to yonder. I got like a water resistant ripstop nylon or something there. It's only like a plasticky feel to it. It's a little tight. So don't put anything too bulky in this area, but it will be a great spot for something like a tablet or a reading book or a notebook. And then at the top, we have Boundary Supplies signature branding. I think it's nice. It gives a little bit of character to the bag uh, without being too loud. Okay, next up, let's talk about the middle of the Boundary Supply Aris. Let's start on slide number one. We have a huge water bottle pocket. This water bottle pocket is big enough for an 18 ounce hydro flask or a 2kg fire extinguisher. Fire extinguisher secure. We also have a couple external straps here. This is great for side carry, yoga mat, tripod especially. If you don't wanna carry the water bottle on the outside, put the tripod here, strap it into place there. Good to go. Next up, we have a top pocket right here. Yet again, YKK PU coated zip. And this is a big, beefy pocket. Ah! And as you can see inside, I have the Boundary Supply Aris Tech kit that they gave me. In this pocket, you also have an additional pocket. This uses Boundary Supply's um, signature mesh, which I just and love. Super stretchy, really nice feel to it. And you got a little nip right here for Boundary Supplies uh, modular key solution, which clips right into your right into place and your keys are safe, secure, and magnetized. This is a really big, just kind of throw all pocket. It's great for something like a tech kit or great spot for like a jacket or a hoodie. Think about it. You're at the airport, you're on a train. Airports and trains can get cold sometimes. They're blasting that AC. You want your hoodie or jacket to be quickly accessible, great spot for it. On the bottom, a couple extra external lash points. What you can do then is take this lash point, connect it to the bottom with a 360 degree plastic guy right here, connect it to the bottom, and then that tripod, yoga mat, bike helmet, whatever you want to carry externally can be carried on the bottom instead. Also notice on the top, we got these buckles right here. These buckles are removable. And what you can do with them is take them from the top, put them on the bottom, and then you can connect the Rift Pack to the bottom instead if you'd like. And then finally, on the other side of the Aris Pack, we have a zip which gives you access to the main compartment. This is ideal for quick access to anything that's inside the main compartment, whether it's clothes, a book, or for you photographers out there, Boundary Supply has a camera cube which integrates perfectly with this bag, and this gives you access to your DSLR. Let's go ahead and swing it over. 
Unzip, grab what you need. On with your day. And speaking of the main compartment, let's get inside, shall we? To get inside, we got these junky YKK number 10 zips. And it's like a three quarter opening clamshell style. Et voila, we're in. The main compartment has this mesh divider, which sort of splits it into two sections. Section number one, we'll call the tech section. And section number two is probably a bit more of like a clothes section. Let's talk tech. You might be thinking to yourself, Aaron, what is this little green dude right here? This is another modular component in Boundary Supply's modular ecosystem. Let's show you how this works. It's connected with these two magnetic nips right there. Just quickly with the field space, it's kind of like your portable desk. It can fit your laptop or iPad. Book or documents in the back. Little tidbits, carrying handle, take it on your way. Off to work. Big fan of the field space. Talk about the laptop compartment. I like what Boundary Supply is bringing to the table. Got a little G hook right here. Keep everything secure, easy to hook and to unhook. And then once you're in, we got a really well padded and extremely well suspended laptop compartment. That is a beautiful amount of suspension. It's extremely well padded. This is like a microfiber like wool feel to it almost, but it'll keep your laptop safe. And if that wasn't enough, the back panel is so <laughs> freaking secure with this carbon panel fiber space age technology they got going on this pack that you're just never gonna have to worry about your laptop. It is, this is the safest your laptop has ever been in its laptop life. One cool note too is Boundary Supply, I've never seen this before, um, added a little extra mesh on the side right here, which just helps give you a bit of expansion. So in case you've got like a bulky laptop, one of those gaming laptops, or you just wanna use this section for something else, Throw like a big ass like binder or something in there because you know it would fit. Um, it has the expansion to fit it. Nice touch. Now flipping over, we have the mesh divider right here. Yet again, Boundary Supply, their mesh game is just strong. We've got a smaller pocket on the top and a larger pocket on the bottom. These pockets are ideal for things that you want to organize that you just don't want to get lost. Maybe they might be smaller in size. I might throw like a Bluetooth mouse up here, maybe my computer charger. Also could be a good spot for like your traveling meds. I always bring like a very mini pharmacy with me when I travel. Uh, Tylenol, Sudafed, Pepto-Bismol, just in case. Also should be noted, we have one, two, three, four like lash points right here. Uh, I'm not sure what these are for, but I can tell you, I hate them. Here's why. To be honest, you two are cool. Pointless, but cool. But these two, whenever I close the heiress, it gets caught on them. Let's try the other one. Yep, it's like literally every time it is inter, see that, I'm stuck interfering right there. It's overcomable. Like it's not in this, it, it literally stopped me in place right there. I'd have to say it's probably the most annoying part of this bag. Uh, that's just really unfortunate that's there. Hopefully Boundary Supply fixes this in newer versions uh, of this pack, but definitely something to be aware of. Let me know, do you have any idea what these external lash points are for? Even if you don't own the pack, give me your best guess. Let me know in the comments below. But while I hate those things, I love what I'm about to show you. Mesh divider, you have these two little like leathery tabs right here and you're like, what in God's name are those? <laughs> I like that. Big fan of that opening system. Closing it is also super simple, but nowhere near as satisfying as just like backpack, open, yes. Boundary supply for the win. And then when we're inside the main compartment, much simpler. You can see right here, we have like some heat bonded tape. This just helps increase the water resistance of the pack. Now, something interesting to note, we have these one, two Velcro strips right here, and we are not 100% sure what they are for. But Boundary Supply clearly markets that you can use this external side pocket to access your bag and grab your camera gear from the Boundary Supply camera cube. So we assume there's some sort of connection mechanism between this and the camera cube, but we can't say for sure. Let us know in the comments below if you have any clarification on this whole thing, because we're, to be honest, a little confused and I'd love to find out. And finally, we have this guy, which I am 99% sure comes included. And it's just kind of like a bag. It connects to the main compartment with three different like T-hooks. And it's great for a few things. Me personally, I would use this for dirty laundry. But it's also a good spot for maybe some spare clothes. You can kind of use it as like just a packing cube in itself or extra pair of shoes. And if you use it for something like your dirty laundry, all you do is to make sure the rest of your bag doesn't get smelly. So you fold this dude up, bring it over, magnetic clip, nice, tidy, and connects 
directly into the bag. Very useful to have while traveling. Now, let's talk about the back of the Boundary Supply Eris. Now, we definitely had some things that we were heavily critical about earlier with this bag, but there's not gonna be a lot on the back that we're gonna be about. This thing is kind of a masterpiece. Let's start by talking about the handles. We have one, two, three, four handles. The bottom handle is a basic nylon webbing, and that's fine because really all this is for is when you put it in the overhead compartment, you wanna grab it, take it out. You're not gonna use it too often, but it's great to have when it's there. The two side handles, also great to have just additional access points, but they also double as a luggage pass-through holder. And then finally on the top, we've got the coolest handle of all. Most top handles on backpacks of this size are like super beefy and super like, mattressy, like a coat, like a comfort, like a jelliness to them. But this is different. It's kind of like a harder material, but really satisfying to use. Enough space to fit your hand in. It's just different and good job, Boundary Supply, for innovating again. I like that handle. Now from there, let's talk about comfort. This pack is really comfortable. Two reasons why. Shoulder straps and back panel. Let's talk about the shoulder straps first. These are actually some of the more cushiony uh, shoulder straps that I've ever reviewed from Boundary Supply. Usually their straps are much denser and very coarse. These are softer, got a nice ventilation there, a nice cushion to it. We've also got these load lifters right here, kind of help take a little pressure off your back, a little weight off your back and redistribute it to your torso. These guys right here keeps the dangle in place like so. Now moving a little further down, we have the sternum strap. And Boundary Supply went above and beyond with their sternum strap. It's another Fidlock, my favorite Fidlock, but it's a beefy Fidlock. These Fidlock magnet buckles are extremely satisfying to use. Take off, snap on, adjust. That's a good time. And then when you wanna take it off, it's just a little pull right there. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. And they were kind enough to leave the other part of the magnet there so you can just slap it into place. Keeps the bag and the shoulder straps nice and tidy. Sternum straps are super important for a backpack of this size because you got a lot of weight and like the load lifters, this helps to redistribute the weight from your back to your torso. One thing to note though that I don't like is that getting it off is kind of annoying. Like you gotta like do one of these lift things. I wish that this part was stuck like right there in place but I don't need this to like relocate. I just need it to be nice, sturdy in place so I can just go ahead and smack it on and smack it off. But unfortunately it's kind of like that. Also worth noting that the sternum strap can be relocated to position one, two, three, or four, or you can just take it off and not use it all together. But I recommend keeping it. Hashtag protect your back. And then moving down, we got little uh, dangle stoppers at the bottom, keeps the bottom of the shoulder strap nice and tidy. So next up, let's talk about the actual back panel. Now the back panel connects to the shoulder straps and what this means is you can use the little Velcro adjustment points to lower or lift it based on your like physical needs and also super seamlessly. I've seen some other adjustable back panel systems but none as easy as that. Like that is really, really nice. It should be known as a little sliding system. This is not like a cheap plastic. This is like, this is like metal. So it should be very durable and last the test of time. And remember, the design is gender neutral, so it's supposed to fit women and men equally. I can't really verify the accuracy of claims like that, but that's what they say, so I'm just reporting the news. Back panel itself, really comfortable, without being too cushiony, a little bit of density there, and you got this cut right down the middle, and that's gonna help with ventilation. So on those hot, sweaty days, backpacking through Chiang Mai and it's 95 degrees outside, this will help ensure a little bit, of, little bit of breeze gets to your back. And you've got increased ventilation on these back panels itself. You see these little holes right there that just helps to make the entire back panel more breathable. And then on the bottom, same back panel here is here, same comfort and ventilation. And you've got a Velcro system, but this is not adjustable. It's just a way to remove the hip belt. To adjust the hip belt, you would unvelcro it right here and just kind of pull it out. But for me, I would never take off the hip belt. The padding on the hip belt isn't quite as like, wow, as the padding on the back panel is. I, may, I maybe would have like just a little more cushion for the pushing. Hip belt is connected by a buckle. Who are you made by? Woojin. They make good hardware. And then you got this excess nylon, right? This excess dangle, but this can be kept in its place with not one, but two dangle stoppers. Very appreciated. Let's talk pros and cons. Pro number one, next level innovation. Pro number two, premium as materials. And pro number three, holy moly, is this thing comfortable. But I got some cons. 
Con number one is the difficulty of disattaching the sling from the front of the bag. And con number two is... <sighs> so with all the pros and all the cons taken into consideration, if you are like, yes, I want it, I'm getting me that Boundary Supply Eris. We do ask that you make your purchase using the first link in our description, just that link, it's just right there. That link makes sure that you get the best price and it also helps to keep the lights on here at the Nomads Nation studio. Thanks for your support. But let's say you're looking for um, some alternative suggestions. You're like, dude, I need me a 35-ish liter backpack, but I'm still not sold on this one yet. That's fine, I have some alternative recommendations for you. Alternative recommendation number one is the packed travel backpack. That's for you if you're like, I thought that I wanted the modules, but now I don't. Because the packed travel backpack is actually pretty similar. Opens up clamshell style, center divider, lots of cool features. To learn more about the packed travel backpack, we did a full review, which you can find right down there in the description below. Alternative recommendation number two is going to be the Tortuga set out. That's for you if you've been watching this review and you're like, holy crap, this is too complicated. I want literally just a, a simple, well-designed, durable backpack for longer term travel. And that's what the Tortuga set out is. To watch our full review, which was shot on the streets of Ho Chi Minh in Vietnam, take a look, you can find the link in the description below. And finally, alternative recommendation number three is going to be the Peak Design Travel Backpack. That's for you if you're digging all the cool features of this bag, but you just kind of want to see a competitor that's also bringing a lot of cool features to the table, which is exactly what the Peak Design Travel Backpack does. I can't even begin to articulate how many features this backpack has, but it's at least 20. To find out what those features are, link description below. Okay, let's talk about the other modular components in the Aris Travel Collection. Okay, first up, let's talk about the Stasis Sling. The sling itself has a nice comfort to it. There's no real padding on the shoulder strap, but since it's a smaller sling, you don't really need that. I love this no dangle they got going on right here, this little contraption. Easy to slide, easy to position to your body's requirements. A little extra comfort too on the back panel. It's not a really solid back panel, a little flimsy, but it's got some decent padding and some great ventilation. On the back, you've got a little hidden side pocket. This runs deep, runs all the way to the bottom. Oh my God, it's, it's the whole size of the back panel is the size of this pocket. I don't know why you need it to be that big, but I guess the real question is why not? Got a top handle in case you want to hang this dude up. And then you can also see we've got two lockable YKK waterproof zips that give you access to the tech area. Will it fit my 13 inch MacBook Pro? See, that is just, that's just really cool. Because when I'm on my day trips, right, I'm at my location and it took me an hour to actually unclip this thing, but I finally did it, right? Because I'm not gonna be carrying around the 35 liter while I'm traveling through the streets of, I don't know, Lima, right? I'm be carrying this guy. But some days, as a digital nomad, I'm gonna wanna go to the local coffee shop or a co-working space. And I can just use this for my day-to-day -day carry. And what's cool is we have like a little pen holder here. Another compartment right here with that really nice boundary supply mesh. And you see this little pass-through hole right there for a camelback. Hang your camelback right here on this loop. Pass the straw through. Hydration. And then you got another cord pass through hole in the middle bottom ish right here. And that can be good if you want to maybe keep a battery in this part of the bag. Carry the wire through and you can charge your phone in this part of the bag. And then as for the main compartment, get in with the zip right here. And like I said, super basic, no additional organization. But you know, I got a tech pouch in there. I got my blue filter glasses. I got my laptop charger. And you know, it's not a huge everyday carry, but as long as you don't have a lot of gear that you're hauling around on a day-to-day -day basis when you're in your new destination, like this can get the job done. And then with these clips, kind of an innovative system, these just sort of like slide their way down. Slide, little guy. So you go ahead and slide these down all the way. And for the bottom ones, just give them a little tough job. And now the clips are not exposed. You got a more seamless travel experience. And then when you want to reattach it to the actual Aris pack, you got to unclip this guy. I don't like these clips. They're a little annoying, but you'll get used to them. Fold up the nylon, tuck it in, pull the clips back out, clip it onto the Aris. It's a beautiful thing. Next modular component, the Rift Pack, which is a sling, but honestly, probably much better off used as a fanny. This guy uses the same materials as all the other bags in this series. 
A little bit louder branding on the um, front of this fanny. A couple of external lash points if you want to clip anything on. YKK PU coated zips gets you into the main compartment. And you got two options. It can be used as a soft shell or a hard shell. To make it a hard shell, you can see this, this additional accessory, which let me unvelcro just to show you. This shell can attach and Velcro to the inside and is a great option for photographers. Little extra protection for your DSLR gear. Pretty well padded. Organization for your lenses, SD cards, and more. I'm not gonna say this is the greatest like camera cube divider system I've ever seen. But if you got it and you're a photographer or you just wanna protect your DSLR, this is definitely better than not having it. And then in the actual main compartment, we have this one zippered pocket, key ring loop on the top, that really nice mesh, just nice for a little additional organization. One thing to note is when you are in fanny mode, this thing, it opens up pretty well. I like the like expansion. You can really get in there and see where your stuff is. You have to pop the top back to do so. But once you do so, you're in. On the top, we have this small pocket right here. Ideal for a pair of sunglasses, in my opinion. Big enough for a phone? Indeed. iPhone 8. And then on the back, you can see the back panel is removable. And that's where you get the straps to go into sling, but preferably fanny mode. Wujin hardware. And then the buckles and everything stay nice and tidy and out of the way. Snap that into place. And then the same for the top buckles. You can go ahead and just tuck those in right there. And right there, the rift pack is formed. So you might be wondering, how do the rift pack and the Sasa sling work when they're worn together? Power Rangers unite. How do I look, Tav? You look ridiculous, but maybe it's better if it's on your back. Yeah. How do I look, Tav? Can you swing the... Fanny around as well. In the back? Yeah. Turn around. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> well, at the end of the day, if you're not too worried about how fashionable you are, um, you can totally rock these things side by side. I think it's a little, I don't know, it's a little cumbersome to have both. For me personally, I would go with one or the other. But if you needed to do both, as you can see, it is do a bull. To be honest, I don't know if you need both accessories. Might be nice to have so you can test it out and see which one sort of suits your preferences. But I think if you need something a little bit bigger and you like slings, this might be the way to go. But if you're just like, dude, give me the fanny, throw some shit in there, call it a day, this might be the way to go. Or have it both ways. Have it your way. That's what Boundary Supply gives you. Are we done yet, Tab? Close it off. Oh, thank God. That was a long one. Why are you still here? <laughs> if you're still here, it must be because you found this review to be useful. If that's the case, the best way to show us just a little bit of love is to just click that like button. It just lets us know that we're doing a good job. And it also lets the YouTube robots know that we're doing a good job. And they're running the game around here. So whatever makes them happy. Also, let us know in the comments below, do you own the Eris pack or any of the modules in the travel series? I gotta know your thoughts. Tell us what your experience has been like so far. Are you able to get the stasis sling off of the front easier than we have been able to? Because it's really been a b for us. Are you also having the problem where the zipper for the main compartment is getting caught on the interior materials of the main compartment section? Like, you know what I'm talking about. Let me know in the comments below how your experience has been. Your comments help make this YouTube channel and the internet as a whole a more educated place. Thank you so much. My name is Aaron. This is Nomad's Nation. We'll see you next time.